My years as NCMP has made me even more convinced that PAP supermajority in Parliament is bad for Singapore and bad for Singaporeans. In the post-COVID years ahead, with likely the globalisation, it will be a brave new world, and no ruling party can say they have been there before. We therefore need more diversity of ideas and less groupthink in Parliament. We need a much more balanced Parliament with constructive elected opposition to deal with important issues affecting Singaporeans, such as jobs, fair hiring, cost of living, retirement adequacy, and future economy. I've worked with people from all walks of life, from underprivileged families, survivors of sexual abuse, youth activists, young parents, and migrant workers. I have also run a multi-million dollar union, worked in nonprofits, and now run my own social enterprise. In the course of my work, I often ask myself, why is it getting disproportionately harder for working class families to live a decent life? Why is it that when it comes to navigating our post-COVID future, only the elites get a seat at the table? This is not the Singapore we deserve. What we deserve is a country where marginalized are cared for, including senior citizens and people with disabilities. We have a right to accessible housing for all, to a low cost of living, to better protection for workers. It's time to fight for such a country, for a Singapore that is fair and equitable, one where the everyday Singaporean has a seat at the table. This election is about us, the working people. You and I, we each have the power, the voice, to empower anyone who feels marginalized, who has for been forgotten in the numbers. As you will, as you will mention, I contested as a candidate in the Marine Parade GRC in the last election. I remember those days when PAP was unchallenged on many wars, resulting in walkover. To me then, nomination day is more important than polling day. I think this is not healthy for the political landscape in Singapore. A political competition will bring out the best in people regardless of the party they come from. Coming forward to serve and to provide more choices for Singaporeans is the right thing for me to do. For a change, I hope for a balanced house with diverse views and voices engaged in robust policy debate which will benefit Singaporeans. At the ground, people should not be afraid to air their views, speak their mind, and critics should not be marginalised. I want to know why a rich country such as us has left our elderly, our vulnerable, our mothers and fathers to work through their sunset years in order to make ends meet. And I want to ensure that we take care of those who have sacrificed so much to get us to where we are, and that workers, and not just companies, actually enjoy the share of national income that is commonplace in other advanced economies. And finally, I want to make sure that our sandwich generation, those of us that are trying to take care of elderly parents, while also raising kids of our own, don't feel trapped by the kind of expectations um, on both ends, even as the cost of living continues to outrun us. I want to know if there's a way we can create good jobs that Singaporeans actually want, even as our system of foreign workers and foreign capital looks to be increasingly exhausted. Although I'm only in my mid-30s, I've been serving in the grassroots for the past nine years. I believe that young Singaporeans should step up to take on more responsibilities and be the voice speaking up for their seniors, their cohort, and their children. Their choices and their actions will shape and change how Singapore is and will be for themselves and for their family in the future. With changes, we must also take note to preserve our heritage and traditions, our Singapore identity, while ensuring that no one, regardless of age, gender or background, is neglected. <laughs>